Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Jim Langlois and my wonderful wife, Katie, from the Master's House in, actually, the building's located in Henrico, Virginia, but we're still meeting virtually, and so we're meeting out of our home in Ashland, Virginia, about 15 miles north of Richmond, and uh, this is the Langlois Ranch. Yay. You are in our living room, and we love having you with us. And, uh, and our mailing address is in Mechanicsville. It gets confusing, but don't worry about all that. It's just kind of funny. This is the Master's House, and we're coming to you in the name of Jesus. And today is the 4th of July. Yay! So happy 4th of July happy to everybody out there. Independence Day. You know, it's a very special day for our country. It's our federal holiday commemorating the adoption of the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776. Isn't that something? And uh, it was declaring independence from the Kingdom of Great Britain. And uh, while we're so excited for our country and we live in a free country, we love it, we want to talk about another freedom that we have, free indeed, a freedom indeed in Christ Jesus. And it's above all other freedoms that you could ever mention. And we're going to talk about that today. So but before we get into the message, I want to mention that we're going to be taking communion in a little bit at the end of the service. So get yourself some juice or some water and some bread or some crackers, something like that. And uh, you can join us in the covenant meal of communion as we celebrate what Christ did for us on the cross. And uh, it's just awesome. So we'll be doing that at the end of the service. So are you ready to pray, Katie? Uh, yes, I am. I am too. Father, we're very thankful for everyone who's joining us at this time, from our church, the Master's House, right here in Virginia, but also for those, all of those that are listening anywhere around the world, watching live or watching this at a later date through YouTube. We welcome you. Yeah. We pray for you. Father, we pray for every one of them. We pray that this message would be a blessing to them, that they would get a revelation on what freedom actually is and what it really is. And it's over and above what any earthly government can offer. And it's the government of God. Bless these people this morning and each day that someone listens to this message. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I'm excited. You excited? Yeah. I am too. <laughs> and so the title of the message is Free Indeed. Can you say free indeed? Free indeed. Free indeed. Can you say free indeed? Free indeed. Awesome. That's that's wonderful. The scripture for the entire message, we'll have more than one, but uh, is comes from John chapter 8, verse 36. Why don't you read that, Katie? <laughs> All right. John 8, 36, New King James Version. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Free indeed. And there is our term for the day. Everybody free say free indeed. indeed. Not just free, but it's free indeed. Indeed, yes. Now, let's look at those two words. There's the word free, mm -hmm. and then there's the word indeed. And there's a reason that the scripture has this term together, this statement, free indeed. And uh, so we did some research on the word free. Can you tell us what it means? Liberated. Released from, not subject to, independent from, not restrained or confined, not in bondage to. Wow, that's a good one. I like that. And then indeed is an interesting word because it means really, actually, certainly, completely, and totally. So it's free, really. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, yeah, I mean... Actually, yeah. Yeah, free actually, free certainly. Uh, we could say it this way. Look at these terms I put together here. Go ahead and read those. Really free, actually free, totally free, certainly free, completely free, granted freedom in every way. And I found those definitions in different books and things. Uh, do you see something you want to mention? Well, yeah, because I like it like this. Like, uh, truly liberated, actually released from, totally not subject to, certainly independent from, completely not restrained or confined and not in bandage or i'm sorry not, not in bandage, bandage. <laughs> not, no bandages. not in bondage not in bandage. to all right all right, all right. That was not funny. in bandage like to that. bandage not in bondage to um but granted freedom in every way and so i like to take those yes. and put them with these. totally not in bondage Totally, totally not. Totally not. Or in bandage. In, <laughs> bandage, yeah, you're if you're in bandage right now 
Uh, we we'll talk to you later. Just freedom. give us a call. We believe for your freedom. We'll lay hands on you. Yes. For healing. <laughs> Praise yes. God. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, let's take oh. this term uh, out of uh, John 8, 36 and um, put it into context of, of what he's saying. And so it starts, it starts earlier than this, but in verse 33 of John chapter 8, we won't look at it, but I'm just going to say what he stated. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, well, just uh, in verses 33 through 34 is what I oh, okay. Five. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, how don't does even that work? look at my screen. <laughs> Sorry. So I, I got one. You got the bandage. I got that. Okay. They don't even know what it is. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> starting in verse 33, Jesus made some statements. He said to them, if he's talking to the, to the religious folks, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So that's what brought this term up. Uh, he's saying that the truth will make them free. And so in verse 33 through 47, this is what the context of it all. And I'd like you to go ahead and read that. And maybe I'll make some comments as we go. Okay, so all 33 right? through 47 of John 8. The and King that's, James Version. Yeah. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to never, anyone. Never, never. How can you say you will be made free? That's a great question from them. You know, we're Abraham's descendants. How can you say that we're not free is really what he was saying. So you will be made free. And then Jesus answered them. Go ahead. Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave or in bondage of sin. Yeah, I put the in bondage. You okay. know? So uh, being a slave is in bondage. So I threw that in there as a definition. Whoever commits sin is in bondage to sin. Mm -hmm. Make makes sense? Mm -hmm. Verse 35. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And there's our verse, verse 36. Keep I know going. that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I've seen my, with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. Now, here's something that's very interesting. He, he, he is stating that we have different fathers here. You don't understand who my father is, and I know who your father is, and you don't know who your father is, what he's really telling who them. Your father is. And, uh, and so they answered him in, in, in verse 39 and said, Abraham is our father. Well, Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children you would do the works of Abraham. Go ahead in verse 40, you can read that. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. He didn't do that. They're not following Abraham. Go right. ahead. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. But he's correcting them. Go ahead. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. Aha. Uh -huh. And the desires of your father, you want to do. What he's really saying, you're in bondage to your father, the devil. And the desires of your father is what you want to do. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Remember, and the truth sets you free. This is right. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, mm -hmm. for he is a liar and the father of it. Mm. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. So he made a, a really strong statement there. They're in bondage to the devil. And it's a, it's a different, uh, totally different uh, place of control. Mm -hmm. and, but Romans 8, 2 really uh, states who we are and where we stand. Romans 8, 2 in the New King James Version says this, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. That's a, that's a really bold statement there. What we need to find out is, well, if we've been made free uh, at, from the law of sin and death, and now we're in the law of the spirit of life, we need to understand what is the law of sin and death, and what is the law 
of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So uh, we let, found some great definitions, nice, short, and concise definitions. This first one is, what is the law of sin and death? I love this quote. Would you read that one? The law of sin and death is the Old Testament law of God. The law is holy, just, and good. But because we cannot keep God's law on our own, the result is only sin and death for those under the law. The reason, it, it, it came once the law was uh, stated and made, then we were aware of what sin was. Mm-hmm. And then once we realized what sin was, we've, and that we've committed that sin, then we are subject to what the law says, which is death. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and, and the only sin and death for those who are under the law, and we were under the law. But then Jesus says we're not under the law. We're under the spirit of life in Christ. So let's see what is the spirit of life in Christ. Read this definition, Katie. The law of the spirit of life is the guidance of the Holy Spirit as he gives us the desire to live a holy life, wisdom concerning how to overcome the world, bodily passions and self-will, and the power to choose holiness in place of spiritual uncleanness. It, there's so much is being said here. The law of the spirit of life is guidance, or it's a woo, or it's a it's a, a, a knowledge that the Holy Spirit gives us, and 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 a desire to live a holy life. Yeah. And 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 as Christians, when we make mistakes, you know, before we were saved, we didn't feel bad about it. You know, but once you're saved, if you make a mistake because of the spirit of life within us, we realize, you know, I shouldn't have done that. I don't feel right about that. I need to repent. I need to get my life right. I need to say to that person, I'm sorry, or I need to restore something here. Uh, And and that's what the spirit of life in us is. It's actually the guidance and the desire to live a holy life. Not only that, uh, it gives us the power to choose holiness and to be in a uh, excuse me, the power to choose holiness in a, in a place of spiritual uncleanness. So when we're around evil, we want to choose holiness. We desire that, and we want to walk away and go with God. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That is the spirit of life. And, and when, when it talks about here wisdom concerning how to overcome the world, it's saying how to overcome worldly things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, uh, evil things, bodily passions, and self will. It gives us, this spirit of life gives us the power to choose holiness mm-hmm. and the ability to walk in it. Yeah. That's what freedom is, is when we can make that choice and do it. Yeah. Because we're not under the bondage anymore where we couldn't walk free from it. Right. Now we can. Uh, but we still have choice. Well, that's the freedom piece of it. Yes. Yeah, that's fascinating. I love it. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14 in the New Living Translation. Read that, Katie. But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. Mm -hmm. Wait, he rescued us from what? The curse. The curse. Okay, just checking. The curse of death. Okay. Because of the law and our sin and we having to pay the price. Go ahead. So he rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. Right. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Mm. Through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised to Abraham. So that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. Wow, the blessing of Abraham. And so the law has both a curse and a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's not that the law is bad, but it brought a problem to us because then it says we're sinners and we must pay the price of death. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to die for it. But there's a blessing that comes with it through Christ Mm -hmm. that we're redeemed from that curse Mm -hmm. and we've received the blessing of Abraham. Yes. Which is where we become the righteousness of God in Christ through something called faith and not by works. Right. That's a really important part. And Second Corinthians 3.17 says, I'll, I'll read this one in the uh, New Living Translation. For the law, or excuse me, for the Lord is the spirit and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So when we concentrate on the spirit of life that's within us, that is the spirit of the Lord, we're going to be able to walk in the freedom of make and make right choices in life. Right. Isn't that fabulous? Right. I just love it. We're not in bondage to that. And Romans 6.18 says it very clearly in the New Living Translation. Read that one. 
Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Yeah, and slaves to righteous living is really a, by choice. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's very interesting. We're really not a slave. We're more of a bond servant, which is somebody who's decided, right. I'm going to do this, not because I'm a slave, but because I want to. Right. <clears throat> you know, right. I'm a bond well, servant. You know, and going back to the initial scripture we were reading, you know, you either serve truth or you serve the lie. Yes. You There's nothing in between. Yes, and we have that choice. And as a matter of fact, last night you gave, gave a really good scripture for a reference in here. We'll read that in a minute and we'll get there. Okay. Uh, make some uh, more comments on that. Galatians okay. chapter 5 verse 1 in the New Living Translation says, So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure, this is a very interesting statement, we're so set free that we still have free, we have free choice. We have more choice now than when we did before we were saved, Mm -hmm. you know, as far as, because we're not in bondage to the the law. It says, now make sure you stay free. Well, who is he talking to? Us. Ah, and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Mm. So he's saying, this is something about choice. Obviously, we have ability to make our own choice. Yeah. We can't really say, okay, I'm free, so you do it for me. I mean, he made us free, but he can't walk the walk that we have to walk and talk the talk that we have to talk. There is a responsibility for us. Right. Amen? Not to be free, but to walk free. Right. Isn't that interesting? We right. have to make that choice. But, and to stay free. And to so, stay free. And Good how point. do you how do you stay free? Well, grace... God has given us grace, right? Yes. And grace empowers us to sustain our walk with him. Wow. You know, grace is the grace is the tool that he's um, empowered us with that when we're walking that path, if we get slightly off the path, we write ourselves back on. Because you know? of that spirit of life desire. Right. To live in holiness. It, it, we allow the word to correct us. But it's our choice. Yes. Like if we're going off the path, he's not going to send some kind of, um, you know, wall to, to block us to keep going, to not keep going that direction. The thing is, is if we are in his truth, if we are sustained within his truth, then we will go, oh, something's not right in my spirit. Something's not right. I need to repent. I need to get back yes, on true. track. And so that's really, it's our choice. It's our walk. It's our communication. And it's our relationship with him. Yeah. And we're made in the image of God. And that's why we have free will. Right. Uh, God can has free will too. So he couldn't create us in his image and not have free will. Right. So we absolutely have free will. And so um, I like this. In Romans five sixteen. In the New Living Translation, I like this, says, and that's our, our house cat there. She loves uh, being on our show, so she's walking around talking to everybody. Just say hello to her. But Romans 5, 16, New Living Translation. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation. But God's free gift leads to our being made right with God even though we're guilty of many sins. I love it. And that's where our faith comes in. We have to believe this in order to walk in it. Yes. We must believe it. First Peter 2.16, I like this in the New Living Translation. You read that one. For you are free, yet you are God's slaves. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. What do you get out of that, Katie? So that's like that hyper grace, you know, where yeah. it's like you only live once. And, you know, you can do whatever because, you know, um, do it now, ask for forgiveness later, that whole mindset. And he paid the price, we can do right, whatever we want. Right, right. And that's the, that's the whole perception or mindset, but it's a lie. And it comes with consequences. And so what he's saying here is don't use your freedom as an excuse that, oh, well, I can do this and then I can repent later. Yeah. That's not how this works. If your true desire is to, just like it would be for any relationship that you have, yeah. You know, you're not out there to go, oh, hey, you know, I don't care if I keep this relationship or not, so I'm just going to go do whatever, and I'll ask for forgiveness mm-hmm. later. That's not how relationships work. Mm-hmm. And so that's exactly what the hyper grace movement is. It's based on um, some kind of phony, um, you know, it's treating God like an it instead of a person. A right. him. You know, it's it's who we are talking to. So... Um, don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Yes, that's good. Um, it says that we're God's slaves. Again, uh, it says, for you are free, yet you are God's slaves. What it means is it's it's not a slave 
by we don't have choice. It's a bond servant that has chosen to follow Christ. Right. And we are his servant. It's a bond servant, a servant who says, I have chosen to follow Jesus. It's a commitment. Yeah, it I is. I mean, that's what it is. It's, you know, it's saying, it's just like, you know, when, it, when we're in marriage here, it's just like saying, I've committed to be your wife. Right. I'm not walking away from you. Right. I'm not going to intentionally go and do evil and repent later. Right. It's the same kind of relationship. So it's And you're that, not my slave. Right, but right. But you in a way we're bond servants. But we're to bond one servants another, to one another. Yes, yeah. So yes. that's yeah, so that's exactly what we're looking that's at. That's very cool. That's very, very cool. Baker, Encyclopedia of the Bible. This is a great uh, uh, commentary on this. It says there is an uh, there is an obvious temptation to presume on our freedom. Since we do nothing to merit our salvation. But we are more than once warned not to misuse our liberty. I like that. Don't you misuse this liberty. It is important to live as free people and not make our liberty the means of bringing us into a new form of slavery of our own devising. Mm. Ooh, and that would be, I'm going to, you know, do what I want, and I don't have to worry about it because of the grace of God. Now we've, we've devised a way that, uh, you know, it's like sin actually doesn't matter. Well, sin still matters. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And uh, it's important, especially with the Spirit of God living inside of us, we believe that it matters, and we want to, we have that desire with that life in us to live a holy life. Right. <clears throat> and there, there are two extremes, and you touched on one earlier, but there's two extremes. You've got that hyper grace thing where it's, you know, I can do whatever and repent right. later. Right. Um, but then there's the other extreme where, you know, we're asking God um, to control us, almost as if to possess us, you know, to, to show us, instead of us... Um, you know, following after him and learning from him and growing and maturing. Right. We um, ask him to just use us. Yeah. Should, you know, just use this body. Let it be whatever you want. I don't want to make any choices. You do all the choices because I'm going to mess up. And it's this whole other side of extreme. Right. You know, it's and so what God's saying is no, no. You know, when I've given you the fruit of the Spirit, I gave you one of those fruit of the Spirit was self-control. That's great. Right? So self-control means point. that we are in charge of our choices. We are in charge of growing and maturing. Yeah. Yes, we're following Christ, but there are times where we know the principles of truth. We know exactly what to do. And there are other times we have to go to him and pray and say, you know, Lord, I don't know what to do here. Yeah. I need your help, your guidance, your wisdom. But, you know, it's just like crossing the street, right? I don't have to pray, Lord, should I cross the street right now? Should I not cross the street right now? I don't know if <laughs> I should cross the street right now. I'm just not sure. You know, we look both ways. And we cross the street. Right. It's a principle that we've practiced and matured and grown in. You're grown in. Yeah. But um, as we're moving forward, we make sure that, you know, there are going to be times where we need to go back to him and say, hey, Lord, you know, I'm going in your word. I'm standing on faith and I need some wisdom here. Yeah. And we can ask freely for that wisdom. But that's part of the maturing process. That's not being controlled by. And that's also not taking advantage of and abusing grace. That's a great word of balance. And and God gives us uh, time to grow, time to work on this as in the walk with him. Because there are times when Christians make mistakes. We either do something or say something that we know is wrong. We knew in advance. Yeah. And for some reason, our flesh got control of us and we, and we said something or did something we shouldn't do. But because of grace and the desire in us to live a holy life, we repent and we come back to God. And, and, and if, if you ever ask him to forgive you, he always forgives you every single time. But the, 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 the thing is that this desire, the spirit of life within us says, you know, I want to improve. I want to keep working on this. And thank God for his grace. He gives us that ability to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just love it. I just love it. I'm not looking for a way out. I'm looking for a way in. Yes. You know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. God is my ability and uh, this, this is where there's no condemnation against us. We can't receive that condemnation. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Mm. And so, yes, we will as Christians make mistakes. And, uh, but if we love him yeah. with that spirit of life in us, 
we, we're not under the bondage to sin. We can walk through it, uh, make the corrections we need to make, and keep going. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I just love it. And so I like this. In Romans 6, chapter 6, verse 7 in the New Living Translation, it says, For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. What does this mean? What this means is, let no Christian say, I can't stop this. Mm. I can't resist this. Mm. Uh, no, that's not true. That's a lie. Uh, you can always follow mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. We might make a mistake, but don't ever say, it's just too hard for me to stop. I can't do this. No, yes, you can mm -hmm. through Christ. Yes. He says, when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. So this is a faith thing again. Yeah. You know, even though we might have messed up our walk, we got to get back up and say, by faith, I am not under bondage. Yeah. I am free in Jesus' name. I am free... In Jesus' name. Indeed. indeed. That's what oh, I... Yeah. Indeed. Okay, I'll sorry. Yeah, I wasn't reading his did. mind. Sorry. I am free. Indeed. Yeah. There we go. Well, and you know, with that one, we were talking yesterday because I was listening to a podcast by Bill Johnson. Yes. And he put yes. something This is awesome. Into, Listen carefully. Um, he put something into a great perspective, a mindset tweak if you will I love this. because um a lot of people might look at it and say oh the opposite of god is the devil right so but there is no opposite of god no there is nothing opposite in power god is almighty and all powerful the opposite of michael the archangel is lucifer now when you said that to me yesterday i had to think about it and once I realized, well, my, Michael was an archangel. But then I realized, wait a minute. The devil, Lucifer, Satan himself, was not a god. No. He was an angel. So the real he, opposite. Uh, he is. He is an, fallen still an angel, angel. A fallen angel. The opposite of Satan isn't God. Mm -mm. It's Michael the angel. Right. So <laughs> isn't that interesting? So it. God is, there is no opposite. There's nothing no. There's no power greater than the, the That's awesome. power of our God. So when, we, when Christ died for us and he finished the work, he completed the work, we either trust that truth that it is completely done because this is the Father's Son here. This is part right. of the Trinity. No comparison. There is no comparison. Right. It is done. So when we, for when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Said That's and it. done. End of discussion. Bam. Yeah. Free indeed. Now, we have to look in that, at that and ask ourselves, I'm going to do it for myself. Do I really believe that? Do we really believe that? Because if we did, we could walk it. Yeah. Yeah. For all things are possible to him who believes. Yeah. And when we mess, when we make a mistake, say something or do something we shouldn't do, we need to turn around and say, wait a minute. I don't have to do that. Yeah. I can do I can do better than this. How how do I know? Cuz I can do all things, all things through, through Christ, Christ who strengthens me. He yeah. set me free. Yes. From the person when it's, it was it's done. done. <laughs> I'll tell you when. We're going to look at a scripture about yeah. when he says it was yeah. done. But um now you were also talking about this uh, type of balance in life in choice. And then we thought about this scripture to kind of fulfill what you were talking about. Remember that yesterday? Read the scripture, it'll come to you. Okay, hopefully. Yes. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 24 in the New Living Translation. Read that. All right, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. Ooh. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Now, do you remember what you said yesterday? A little bit. I'm trying to remember, but it was something along the lines of, you know, we were talking about in, in the area of finances, per se, that when we're looking at our finances, um, 
you know, if we are spending over our means, then we're in debt and we've become um, a slave to the master of debt. Um, whereas, you know, our, and that could be something about like our cars or our clothes or whatever that becomes our master mm-hmm. because now we're enslaved to it. We are, we're stuck. We're in debt to we're it. Right. Subject to it. We're, yeah. So that's, that's our master now. So, the, so you're looking at it in two extremes of, you know, if God isn't our master, then something else is. Yes. Say that again. So if God isn't our master, then something else is. You can't serve two masters. Right. So, wow. you know, if you're if you're sitting there and you're like, well, I don't want to give up my opinion on this matter, or I don't want to give up my relationship with this person because God says it's wrong, or I don't want to give up, you know, how I feel because, you know, I, I feel things all the time, but God says I'm supposed to have this, like I'm supposed to be in joy, you know, and you don't want to give that up, then you're giving that thing, that idol, power. You're yeah. giving it the ability to master over you. Wow. And one physical life uh, substance that we can see is how we handle our money. Yeah, that's it's not a, it's not really a spiritual issue. It's really a thing. I mean, do we what do we do with our money according to what God says to do with I'm, it? I believe it is a spiritual issue. Okay. Because if you think about it, two of the most um, important things in a person's life, this is what they get up and they work for, is money and their time. Money and time are invaluable in a lot of ways, right? It's you. Right. So where you put your money is what you trust in. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Sure. So. So, yes, I agree with you. Absolutely. There is a... um, so there is a spiritual disadvantage on your life if you choose not to put your money where God says. Like if you choose to rob God. Mm. If you choose to rob God of his tithes. If you choose not to give into his kingdom. You've put yourself at a spiritual disadvantage. It's not that you're cursed because you've been redeemed from the curse. But you have put yourself at a spiritual disadvantage. However, yeah. if you are following along and you're desiring in your heart of all hearts to please God. Because that's your relationship with him. I love God. I want to please you. I want to honor you. I want to further your kingdom. I want to share your love and joy. I'm going to put my money and yeah. my time, the things that I there value, you go. sure. I'm going to put your them life. into his kingdom. Yes. And that way, I'm no longer at a spiritual disadvantage because I put my faith in action. Yeah. But let me throw in something here because that's 100% correct. Um, somebody, I heard... I thought I heard somebody say, or somebody could have said, oh, wait a minute, if you're tithing, you're under the law. Mm. But that's not true, because tithing existed before the law. When the law came, it just verified that that principle was correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see, in the Old Testament, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it was a principle in their life of worship to God. Mm -hmm. And so it was a tithe then, it's a tenth. And even in the New Testament, Jesus in Matthew 26, 26 said, you know, you sh- uh, uh, twenty. I think it's 23, 20, I can't remember the verse, but it's in there. But he says uh, to the religious folks, yes, you should tithe, but there are things that are even greater than that. Um, so uh, you can't, tithing is a point of freedom and worship and trust in God's word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I just wanted to add that in there because somebody might say, oh, wait, man, you, you're under the law if you're tithing. No, you're not under the law. You're under a principle of worship towards God who told us what belongs to him. Right. And there's two parts in the Bible that I can think of off the top of my head where, you know, two different people before the law ever existed had tithed. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. it's it's a principle that pleases God. But yes. but again, you know, um, a t- you know, in the basis of time where, you know, we should be very careful about how we spend our time. Our time yes. is valuable. Yeah. Um, you know, when you have an eternal perspective, our our time here on earth, our time in this life is but a blip on a line of eternity. Right. 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 So when we have that thought process, then we know that we need to use our time wisely. And those that want to, you know, constantly um, be on phones or check social media or, 
you know, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but I think that there's balance to yeah, it. Yeah, we all have to be careful. We all it. have to be careful to it. The same thing with, you know, television. You know, you can choose to watch things like The Chosen or, or whatever, you know, your broadcast, Better Together, you know, any kind of thing like that. You can choose to watch um, something on television, which is fine. But again, your time. Yeah. You know, and so again, who are you serving? Are you serving the cable company? Or are you serving Christ in your life? So it's yeah. something that you have to keep asking yourself in your walk. Right. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, a veg vegetation station is what we call it. Like when you're vegging or whatever is bad. Sometimes you just need to rest and you end up taking a nap like some people. I believe in that. But, you know, but at the same time, you value your time. You value who you spend your time with. So, therefore, you've got to figure out who are you serving. Because if you're not serving one, you're definitely serving yeah. somebody else. And it's else. pretty evident to see someone. You'll, you'll know my disciples by what they do and, right. and what they believe. And uh, you can see, you can look at anyone and say, well, you know, what do they do with their life? And what are they, how are their finances? How right. do they handle those? And you can see whether they're actually, uh, who they're serving. Right. That's really, that's really what it's about. It's very, very interesting. And so... Uh, I like that. No one can serve two masters. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, in the New King James Version, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. We have to say this very carefully, that we can't work our way to heaven. No. And, uh, you know, all our good deeds are good, but they're not. Uh, we don't earn points to go to heaven through it. The only way uh, to be forgiven of sin and to make it into heaven is by grace through faith in Christ. And this brings us, uh, it, and then it says, why? For we are his workmanship, mm -hmm. verse 10, we're his workmanship, we are okay. his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for something very important. Good, good works. works. Good works. So, well, somebody said, well, that's, that's bondage. No, it isn't. Good works are good works. <laughs> right. And... Uh, and that's a part of what, what, what is our life completing for God, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Mm -hmm. There are good w works that he has prepared that all of us should be walking in. Right. We need to determine what that is and seek out how to do that for him. Amen? Amen. So it's not by works, it's by faith. And I love, this is my favorite qu quote. We are saved, we are saved by grace, through faith, that works by love. Let's say all, let's say all that together. Uh, we are saved, saved by grace. I'll say it. You repeat it. Oh, by grace. By grace. Through faith. Through faith. That works. That works. By love. By love. And that is just the the greatest statement I heard that from a, a friend minister of mine. Luke chapter four verses eighteen through twenty one. New Living Translation. Read this one. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down, all eyes in the synagogue, looking at him intently. Then he began to speak to them. The scripture you've just heard has been fulfilled this very day. So somebody would say, well, you know, all this is going to happen when we get to heaven. No, Jesus said right here that the captives will be released and the oppressed will be set free. The blind will see. And the blind will see. You know, the time of the Lord's favor has, has come. And he said, the scripture you just heard has been fulfilled this very day. And it was a quote that he wrote from Isaiah in chapter 61. Mm -hmm. Very, very powerful. So all this exists right right now now it's awesome it's awesome galatians chapter 5 verse 16 through 18 because this exists now then read this one all right i will say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh we obviously have the ability of choice yes for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish but if you are led by the spirit if you are led by the spirit yeah you are not under the law not under the law if and we are free, free indeed, indeed which means really free actually free 
totally free, certainly free, completely free, and granted freedom in every way. And then uh, let's go back to our founding verse that we started with in John chapter 8, verse 36. This is the Passion Translation. And Katie read this last night. We said, you know, we need to end the message with this version of that verse. Go ahead and read it. So if the Son sets you free from sin, then become a true Son. Then become a true Son and be unquestionably free. Can you expand on that, Amy? Well, first of all, it says become a true son. Ah. So that's part of your walk. That's our walk. Yeah. Which we just said we can do. Yeah. He's given this ability through the Spirit. Yeah. To become. So then become a true son. A son or daughter walking in truth, right? Wow, that's really walking good. Walking in truth. I like that. And be unquestionably. There's no question about it. There's no doubt. There's no thought. There's nothing that goes against it. Be unquestionably free. Be confident in that. Wow. Would, would you say that unquestionably free would be free indeed? Yes. <laughs> yes. And this is not by a work. It's by faith, yeah. which we've determined. And we are free indeed. indeed. Father, we just thank you for this word. And I thank you that um, uh, Katie and I want to thank you for giving this to us because we want to learn more of this. We want to walk in a higher Uh, realms of this in Jesus' name, every day learning about our true freedom that we have in Christ from the law and in walking in the blessings of Abraham. Father, we just thank you for this, and I pray for all the people who have listened to this message today or going to listen to it, that you would have a deep, all of us would have a deep revelation of what free indeed is, and that it would give us and we would receive by faith that total freedom to walk in the spirit that we have right now in Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Isn't that awesome? I just love it. I just love it. That's a really good, uh, good message. And that's a good message for the 4th of July. Yeah. Here we are the 4th of July, Independence Day. Well, we're independent from the law, (laughs) the, the law of sin and death. And we can walk in the law of the spirit of Christ. Praise God. That's awesome. You know, I think it would be good to take communion on this. Yeah. Don't you? I do. And so uh, if you have some juice, I'm going to get mine and put it right here, and some crackers or some bread. And <laughs> crackers. Cr- well, crackers. You know, <laughs> I'm going to put this right here. <laughs> and I um, uh, have a good scripture for communion. We've actually been reading through the book of Hebrews chapter 10 uh, on this, chapter 9 and 10. And so uh, this is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16 through 17 in the New Living Translation. It says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Now, I don't know about you, but I know for Katie and I, we can sense his word written on our hearts and written on our minds. And it's what guides us and it gives it, that's the spirit of life that's guiding us in life to make the proper corrections. If we're ever headed off course, we, we know it, we can see it, and we say, oh, we got to do something better there. A lot of times we're correcting each other, you know, and how we speak, what we do. We go, ah, oh, shouldn't have said that. I need to say it differently, you know, and that's uh, the walk with, with Christ. And it says that uh, uh, I'll put my laws in their hearts, write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again. What does that mean? Never again. He will never again remember our sins and lawless deeds. I love it. He will never remember them again. We can't walk back, you know, when we get to heaven, go up, Jesus, you know, that time that I did such and such, I'm really sorry. He's going to go, I don't know what you're talking about. I I don't remember. Uh, So, you know, be free. He's really going to say, be, be free, free you know, because I, I don't remember, you know, you, yeah. you've been, you've been forgiven of those things. He says, I'll never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. Thank you, Lord. And so, uh, on the last, at the last supper with his disciples, he took bread and he said, this bread is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The Bible says that by the stripes of Jesus, all Uh, We are healed by the stripes of Jesus. And it also says that all our needs are met by his riches and glory. Well, the riches and glory, our needs are met here on earth. Mm -hmm. 
And so that's the physicalities of life, our healing, our provision. And that's what this bread stands for. And I'm so thankful. He said to take and eat in remembrance. And so also in, in, in a way of faith by saying, you know, not only do I remember this, but I believe it. Yeah. It's mine. I'm redeemed from the curse. By his stripes I'm healed and all my needs are met by his riches and glory. So we eat this, Heavenly Father. We thank you for it. We do this because we believe it and say thank you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Mm. So powerful. And then uh, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so this is why we do this uh, a lot, very often, to try to remember, wait a minute, he, he, he shed his blood and, and washed us. We've been washed by the blood, not just covered over, but washed and cleansed. So that's why he can't remember them. They can't be found. They're far as the east is from the west. And so many scriptures that say, where did your sins go? Well, all we need to know is they're gone. Thank you, Jesus. By his blood, we've been set free every drop. And we've been given his life. And he exchanged our sin for his righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. He died for our sins and paid the price. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Go ahead. And we do this in faith, believing for his return. So, Lord, we do this believing in your return. We look forward to that. So forward to your return and your rulership on earth for the millennium. And then forever in heaven at the right hand of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. So, you know, another thing that we do every week is we receive an offering. Yeah. And it gives us the ability to support our churches, support the kingdom of God, sow seed into the kingdom of God to get the word to cover the, the world yeah. and preach the gospel all the way around the world. And so we, as the Master's House, of course, we're here live uh, sharing the, the uh, true word of God uh, all around the world right now. We also have uh, books and many products that we've put out, and uh, we're doing a lot of work for the Lord in different places that we're supporting We'd love to ha have you support us. We also have a message that we're, uh, as a church, a mission that he's given us. We'll tell you about that in a minute. And if you would uh, decide to support the Master's House, sow a seed, we'd love for you to do that. Of course, if you're a member of the Master's House, then this would be where you, your tithes would come. And uh, we call the Master's House strong financially to do the work that he's called us to do. Yeah. And so he wants the house to be full of meat which means uh, a supply to do the things that we are called to do. And every church has a different mission and a different purpose. And so uh, look into where you're going and find out what they're doing. Or for us too, if you'd like to be a part of our church, we'd love for you to, to uh, become a part of our family. We are a family. We're not a corporation. We're a family. Yeah. Amen. And we'd mm -hmm. love to have you with us. But um, So I have a scripture on giving. Out of Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 through 10. You want to read that, Katie, in the New King James Version? All right. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. You know, that's the blessing of Abraham. We don't give so we get. But he says as we are involved in his finances and his kingdom, he will be involved in our finances and the things that we have to do in life too. And even as a church, as individuals, as families, and as a church. So as we honor the Lord with our possessions, that's what we're talking about. It's not a legality. It's not a law thing. It's a, it's a principle of worship. And with the first fruits of all your increase, again, that's a reference to our tithes. The top, the best, you know, 10%. And then our barns will be filled with plenty and our vats will overflow with new wine. And I can attest to over 40 years of being in the ministry uh, as a tither. He has always come through and never failed me. And for us as a couple, it's just beyond, it's, it's just amazing. We've both been tithers and now we're married and we tithe together. And, and um, it's, it's such a joy, a way of worship and a way to just say, ah, 
really trust you, Jesus. Well, what I like about Proverbs 3, 9 through 10 is that when it says, honor the Lord with your possessions, you know, you first realize that none of what I have is mine. Yes. It's all been given to me by the grace of God. It all belongs to him. And really, I am not the owner. I'm the steward. Mm. And so That's if I point. look at me being a steward, with the mindset of me being a steward, and I'm honoring the Lord with the possessions that he's given me, really, I'm taking care of his possessions. I'm taking care of the things that he has blessed me with. So therefore, would I be stingy with them? Right. That's a good point. Would I <clears throat> be... Um, would if if he has given me the finances, would I go and buy that? Mm. What you know what I'm saying? Without saying it, would I go and buy that? Would I go and buy the movie that's unholy? Would oh. I go and buy the, the you know prescri- or subscription that's obviously filled with sin? Would I go and um, you know not offer the ride? When I've been yes, given the yeah. car, I've been yeah. given the business or I've been mm-hmm. given the know-how when I not use that to help others. Yes. Would I only use it for my own gain when it wasn't mine to begin with? I am a steward over these things, whether it be possessions, whether it be mm-hmm. talents, whether it be giftings, right. whether it be the know-how. Um, those are things that we honor the Lord with because it was never ours to begin with. And when we go, when we go home... We don't take any of it with us anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You can't take it to heaven. You don't need it there. And so it's just a tool we can use here and handle properly. And in his kingdom and concerning finance, he's got tithes and offerings. Tithes is what he says belongs to him. He's given an amount. And that's supposed to be given to his kingdom and the church. Mm -hmm. And they've been given uh, direct guidelines on how and what to do with that. And then the offerings are ours. And we can decide where they go and what they're for. And so um, that's things like building funds or even alms, and we want to help somebody else out. That's another word that's in the, in the Bible. So uh, it's a great system to be involved in, in tithes, offerings, and arms, alms, excuse me, uh, in support of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. So if you would like to support the Master's House, we would love for you to be a part of what we're doing. And so you can mail... To uh, TMH, just uh, stands for the Master's House. Our mailing address is Post Office Box 1568 in Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23116. And Mechanicsville is just like it says, Mechanicsville, uh, two, three, uh, Virginia, 23116. Or you can give by debit or deb- uh, credit or debit card uh, at our website, which is tmhnow.org, TMH. NOW.org is our website. There's a giving page there, and uh, you can hit the giving button, and it'll tell you what to do for um, credit cards and debit cards. And also, you can get a uh, the Tithely app for your phone, T, and it's spelled T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. And it's a Christian-owned um, uh, business in order to give electronically, and it's a great business to support. Uh, but you can look for uh, the Master's House in... Um, Mechanicsville, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. I got to get that right. <laughs> yes. Look for the, the Master's House in Mechanicsville, and that'll be our church if you'd like to support through that app on your phone. A great way to do it. And so we appreciate uh, all your support, and uh, we have uh, a lot of people that are thankful for your giving. Amen. Amen. That we're supporting and what we're doing in, in getting the uh, word around the world. So let's pray over our gifts. Say this after me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I was lost. I was lost. But now by your grace. But now by your grace. I've been saved. I've been saved. I worship you. I worship you. And rejoice. And rejoice. In every good thing. In every good thing. You have given me. You have given me. I bring. I bring. And consecrate. And consecrate. My tithes and offerings. My tithes and offerings. To you. To you. The first fruits of the land. The first fruits of the land you have given me. You have given me. You've established your kingdom. You've established your kingdom on the earth. On the earth, and you've looked down from heaven. And you've looked down from and heaven. blessed us. And blessed us. Your people. Your people. And the land. And the land you've given us. You have given in us Jesus in name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And that's our confession of faith over yeah. our giving. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> in closing, <clears throat> you can find out about us in, in in a couple of different places. Of course, our our regular site. Website is tmhnow.org. But we also have our mission and what God has on 
uh, us and what we're doing around the world, and it's called the Family Bible Revolution. Our website for that is familybiblerevolution.com. That makes it simple, familybiblerevolution.com. And you can go there. There's a couple videos you can watch, and you can start learning this message that we have for family. It's an end-time message for his generational blessing. Go there and watch that and really be a blessing to you. We also have our YouTube site, which is the Master's House RVA, which stands for Richmond, Virginia, and of course right here on Facebook Live at uh, TMH Now. If you got a prayer request or would like to speak to me or Katie, send it to Pastor Jim, P-A-S-T-O-R-J-I-M, at TMHNOW.org, and I promise you we'll respond, and we're so thankful. We'd be so thankful to hear from you. But I also want to mention we also have a midweek meeting that we do on Zoom. We call it the Family Worship Zoom. It's every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the United States. And so we'd love for you to, uh, to, uh, to be a part of that. In order to get uh, the link for that, just go to the website on familybiblerevolution.com. Go to the website, go to the calendar, and go to the next Tuesday. Click on that and you'll see the Zoom Family Worship. And if you open that up, it'll give you the link and you can join us. It's different. Here we are just teaching uh, uh, teach, teaching you on Sunday morning, but there's really no part uh, where you can share in the, this, the discussion. But on Tuesday nights, we model what we call family worship, which is the message God has up for us around the world, and model how to do it at home. We'd love for you to be there and join us, and we can teach you how to do this, the Family Bible Revolution. It's really awesome, and it's where everybody gets to share and talk. Amen. Amen. It's just a, a great time. Even Callie. Even Callie, our, our, our uh, house cat, yes, <laughs> gets to talk. And so we appreciate the, uh, you being with us this morning. We call you blessed. We thank you. We love you. We hope to see you Tuesday at Zoom and again here next Sunday uh, for the next message. You know, one thing we want to mention is that for those that were trying to find us last week, we apologize. Wow. <laughs> we had traveled to Faith Alive Fellowship in Elkton, Virginia to minister at their church. Yes. And we took all our equipment here and our cameras and, and set it all up there. And we got it all working for the service there at, um, at in Elkton, Virginia. Yep. And the broadcast started. And 55 seconds into the broadcast, everything shut down. And we didn't know it. No, it said we were still live. Yes, yeah, said we were still alive. And so we didn't find out till after the message uh, was over. So we will, we apologize that we missed last week. I think we lost internet connection. We lost internet connection. So. And so, uh, but what I want to say is we had a great message last week on faith rests. Yes. And I don't want to deny anyone from having heard that message. No. So we're going to teach the message from last Sunday, next Sunday, right here, faith rests. And so we hope to see you then. We look forward to it. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you soon. <laughs>